It is April the 16th, 2022, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Here we go again with yet another episode of The Future of Photography. I'm Chris, and there's Jeremiah. Hello. We're in a slimmed down version today. Well, Adrian is busy with uh, important things, and uh, he yes. might tell us in another episode about this, but he's excused. He's absolutely yes. clearly excused we, we, for this one. We applaud his, his uh, extracurricular yes, sure. uh, activity. So it's the two of us, but it's with a topic that is... Still of very, very exciting, <laughs> very exciting. I mean, well, the, the, both of us are, I don't know, we could both place ourselves in the in the <laughs> nerd category a little bit at least and, uh, and, and yeah. in the tech in the tech enthusiast category. And this goes right in there. Um, and I think it is something that has profound implications. So let me let me bring up a tweet that someone just recently uh, twittered. And it's this one. Let me read this to you. For those of you who are not watching, let me read this to you. It says, 1980, AI will never beat the world-class uh, chess champion. 1997, well, chess is easy, but it'll never be able to do Go. 2016, well, sure, but it's just math. AI could never be creative. 2022, hey, Dali 2, draw me a bowl of soup that looks like a monster knitted out of wool. And that tweet is accompanied by a bowl of soup that looks like a monster knitted out of wool. It is exactly what it describes. It's a photo, but it's not a photo. It is an artificial piece of art created by an AI. And that AI is called DALL-E2, D-A-L-L-E-2. Like the... And, and, like and Salvador, we could say right? the image looks... Photo, photo real. It's a photo. Like if, yeah, it's a photo. It's if, a if, photo. If, if you wouldn't, if, if, if I wouldn't know that this is, that this comes out of the, uh, the circuits of a computer, I'd say this is a photo. And, um, and, and, and a, a computer with a terrific sense of humor. Well, that's the interesting thing. So we are looking at, uh, some really interesting developments in AI right now in machine learning and, uh, um, and DALI 2 is one of those products. It's a product by uh, OpenAI. It's not public yet. So at this point in time, you have to access it through like a proxy. We'll get into that in a second. Um, and uh, another thing I want to show is the size of these machine learning models. So how this works, and we have talked about this in the past, is you have a data set, you have the network that you designed and now you train the network based on the data set you give the network data and you tell it this is a cat this is a dog this is such and such and you give it like we're talking millions and millions and millions of uh, things and that model that learns these things is um, comes down to a bunch of parameters and those parameters th those numbers of parameters are exploding right now here's a little chart again if you don't see this it shows the a, a bunch of different neural nets that uh, and their sizes and there's gpt1 uh, which is a tiny speck and then gpt2 which is a bit bigger gpt3 which is even bigger and um that is a a language model and then there are other models right now that are just like the, the sizes of these things are growing exponentially and what's interesting is that these sizes also correlate with what these things can do so they are these are these linguistically bound in any way uh, in terms of english versus german or chinese uh, or do they have ai capable of making accurate translations in order to fulfill their function that is that is happening and and also what they find is that some of these models can easily be used for other things that are outside of language so um, we're talking some of these models are able to create computer code 
So yeah. and and we're talking about better than fifty percent of participants in in competitions, right? So there's uh, th these things are getting to human level, or they are at human level, at least for the average of the participants. Um, they still cannot compete with the best, but hey. We've said in 1980 <laughs> that computers couldn't win against Kasparov, and what happened? So you know, it's, okay. there is uh, there is progress, and it won't stop just uh, now. Also, tra training these networks becomes, in a way, easier as more and more people post images online. <laughs> Hashtag cats. The, so the data just sets farming, grow. yes, yeah. farming data sets on cats. Today, 2022, is very different than farming data sets in 1997, where you would probably have to feed individual scans into a computer yeah. system in order to read it. Now you just send it out, these bots, for any, any part of any dictionary uh, yes. in terms of nouns, certainly, and it will pull thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions refreshed daily so that that data sets keep growing exponentially as yep. do the kind of linguistic analysis and the synthesis, which is what really separates the men from the boys in terms of the output, is yes, you have all of these parameters or all of these notions, the bowl, the you know the woven fa fabric the the eyeballs what, whatever it is but it has to understand where they go how the application works what layers you put on when and how to create something that a human would respond to so it's it's in the the bridging of all of these data sets that is amazing computer it, intelligence as far as i'm concerned it is it is wild um we are now getting to like like uh, just a couple of weeks ago it was a big week because a lot of announcements have been made around these new uh machine learning models one is uh, by google called palm and that mm. is capable of explaining a joke to you yeah like like the concept of a joke is such an ephemeral thing such a difficult thing to grasp and that thing can take a joke and then tell you or take its best guess at um, what that joke means, how it works, why it's funny. Which, I mean, just, just the thought of that is... Um, funny itself. <laughs> <clears throat> well, slightly <laughs> scary, I would think, but... Well, so. it is, because also there's a joke, but there's also a threat, uh, a joke, a threat, any nuance oh, yeah. of interpretation. And it's different. A joke in German is not a joke in Japanese, which is not a joke in English, because they all have extreme cultural biases in, in humor that really make, make uh, individual comedians um, limited in terms of their international scope. Uh, and that, that, that we find that in Hollywood, of course, where somebody goes, oh, yeah, this comedy, this will play in this territory, but absolutely not in another because of the cultural differences, people just won't get the joke, right. as we won't get other jokes too. That that bridge of of how to meld what you know, so you have all these different parts, putting them together. How do you code that? That's that's what astonishes me. Yeah, well, that, that's that's the power of neural networks, I guess, um, and it is. It has it has a very uh, utopian slant, but also has a very dystopian slant. But and, and so I I don't really want to go to the dystopian side of things because, uh, but we'll definitely talk. <laughs> yeah, well, right, that's what you're here for. We'll we'll definitely talk about the implications of um, what that means for us and the future of photography. But before we before we do this, I want to go on you uh, on on Twitter and just look at a search for these pictures. So if you if you use the hashtag. Dali, D A L L E two, the number two. Um, it'll bring up a search, or that's what you search for, hashtag Dali two, and that's um, where a lot of these pictures show up. And th the way this works right now is that there are a lot of people are putting in requests online, and then people who actually work with Dali um, feed this into the system and then post the pictures that they get back. So it's a kind of an interesting um, um, roundabout way at this point. Later. There will be an API. You can pay for access, and that's how they make money. 
Because training this model, like this is an important uh, uh, side information, training such a model at, of this size can easily cost tens of millions of dollars. So sure. there is computing power, there is hardware, there is enormous amounts of, of, of preparation and processing and so on. Um, we're talking about some of the biggest computers on the planet right now that, that create wait, these models. Wait till, we get, wait till we get to the next generation of quantum computing oh. and this. And then it, it'll really take off. But we, we're looking at a... a, at a Uh, a business model, pretty much. You can very soon, as an artist, get an API access to this thing and then create art or let this thing create art for you. And Well, here's a question. Who owns the copyright? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. There oh, yeah, will there, will, there will be ramifications forever. Like in, in your, your first example... Somebody could say, well, that piece of carpet or whatever it was, that woven fabric, or yeah. here, the, that dog design cartoon that so sits in a here's kind of the, cartoon world. Here's the prompt for it. It says, 1990 Geo Metro spacecraft filled with joyriding astronaut cats visiting a bustling shopping mall space station orbiting Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very, Now, very complex prompt, and it everything's in the picture. Yes. Now, was the picture of, say, cat number one um, an original drawing by someone who that exists is a good question. on the planet? Or no, it was, was not. Or was it drawn by the computer? It was, was drawn was by the computer. Draw well, do we know that? Well, he, here's, a, here's an interesting, um, interesting thought that I read about. Someone said, oh, why, why do we need this? You could just use a Google search, a Google image search, because there are so many pictures on Google. That will certainly be in that data set, if, what, whatever you search for. And uh, seeing some of these results, I would strongly disagree. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this, uh, this kind of a prompt is not... Uh, reflected in a Google search. Here's a, a, a Delacroix painting of a person in the woods struggling with depression, which is very convincing painting style. Yeah, it um, is beautiful. I it, mean, it's actually very beautiful. So if you're not image. watching, we were trying to explain what we're looking at. Here's a Van Gogh style painting of a corgi <laughs> marrying a corgi. Um, it's a pretty... Yeah, it is in, in that style. Um... Mona Lisa in her studio painting Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> that could yeah, certainly I, look like that. I really see these ending up on OpenSea. Oh, there, there will be NFTs. And, and especially when, the, when an API of that is available, there will be fully automated NFTs and the prices for NFTs will just drop to nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the whole value uh, proposition of art is in danger, I would think. Here's a encyclopedia illustrations um, of a mouse that lives in the forest in a mushroom house. I mean, the, the style is perfect. Uh, there are variations of it, so it's not just one. It's like as many as you like, and they're all different, but they all show the Collect exact. Collect the whole set. Collect the whole set. Here's the f here's a photo of a pizza cat. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? There's yeah. there's so much wild stuff out there, um, and and it does different styles. It's not not all is photorealistic. Let me just find it. One here's a steampunk, a steampunk old western painting of a cyborg ox pulling a Conestoga wagon. It's it's actually these images are so well rendered. It's actually hard to believe they weren't original. And they, in fact, are original, but original artwork done by an extremely talented stylist. A photo of a piece of pizza with Lego toppings. Yeah, that's what this not, would look like. Not a difficult one to do. Not but, really, uh, no. Still. <laughs> still. Um, what is that? Images of a medieval manuscript depicting an explanation of the internet. This is <laughs> creative, Okay. So yeah. here's here's the thing we're looking at a at a medieval style painting and two people are discussing the, explaining the internet and one has a laptop kind of thing illustrated in front of him and then between them there are weird lines which are some connections and a bird flying 
representing tweet, tweets, I mm, assume. Possibly. And they uh, are connected by wire or hose. Here's, a, here's another one that is along the same lines with people being connected to whatever that looks like, the legs of someone. It's... And I just, just we, we encourage you to to explore um, because uh, it's truly a game changer for the world of art. That's for sure. And I think you're hundred percent right that um, as as we've seen um, computer art, and I'm not talking about generative art that's based on code written by artists. Um, I'm, I'm talking about programmable paintings that are original paintings that have been exhibited and sold for very, very pricey uh, amounts um, because they were first in that space. And they're very, you know, you put in, you know, uh, a thousand classical paintings and uh, some portraits and you say, you know, paint me a picture in this style. Um, this is the most, the crudest version. Once you look at the where we are at now, which is just an interregnum to where we're going, um, with with really blinding computer speeds and storage, and the ability to farm networks in real time. Um, the the term originality will be in the query, I, I, and, and then we can see this. <laughs> here, here's the thing: the, what this means is that as long as you can imagine it, as long as you can put it in words, you can have art based on it without needing any of the skills to make this art. So the yeah. whole skillful, the, 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 the path from thought to, <clears throat> to artwork is, isn't there anymore. It just happens. Is art it, just, just appears it, out of thin air. By the way, but is that not part of the kind of cultural calculus and direction that we have encouraged for centuries, i.e., do you really have to know how to add now if you have a calculator on your iPhone handy at no, all times? No, of not talking, not. not talking about the the learning to add, subtract, multiply algebra, geometry, um, calculus, all of that is not something that encourages a thinking pattern that well, can be applied to other things. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about what's the change for $93.74 minus $62. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's the difference between calculations and mathematics. And well, yeah, this is this. Uh, here, here's another thread. Uh, and just, just as an example, okay, J someone built a thread of pictures from Dali to. Uh, called Statue Struggles, a thread of frustrated statues stuck in rush hour traffic. So <laughs> there's, well, we're looking at, a, a, at what what you would think of a photo of a statue stuck in rush hour traffic. So um, a, a photorealistic statue with a hand on a steering wheel and uh, the, the, the depth of field is rendered nicely. Here's another one with someone at a steering wheel, a statue at a steering wheel being very bored. Um, this, isn't, that, isn't that wild? Isn't that just yeah. wild? Here, here's my favorite. No, wait. My, where's my... This is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> a very distressed statue waiting in traffic. This is... I mean, the implications gets, of that are this just... Gets to a fun, it gets to a fundamental question. Is having high levels of skill um, with a correlation to imagination essential to create great work? Or is it just imagination with the right tools? Now we in the, you know in the photographic realm with our iPhones can take genius photographs without truly understanding the nuances of depth of field, contrast, calculations of reciprocity, et cetera, et cetera. And yet we can just pick up our thing, push a button, there you go. And now, as you and I have discussed, you can have 360 cameras or virtual reality descents yeah. where you just take capture everything 
and then recompose as needed. But even then, you know, you could say uh, a minimalist snowbound landscape uh, at noon on a overcast day. And 20 variations mm -hmm. of it, and then you pick the best one that you like most. So yeah. you're, you're, you're just deciding between uh, different variations of the same thing. And uh, that's yeah, where your artistic sensibility comes in. So art will become maybe in the purview of highly imaginative people, which it always has been, but without the skill set that will continue to increase. In other words, nowadays, I could design something in CAD. I could render it out, take it to a Italian marble place who fit it into a machine who will carve, you know, a, a, an 11, 12 foot statue out of marble, polished, beautiful to my design. Uh, does that make me less of an artist than Michelangelo? <laughs> well, and now, and, and I'm now, not implying that I am. I just want to be very clear about and it. And what now happens is that you can just explain what you want and choose the one that you like best, and then uh, it appears right. out of that machine. Yeah. So you won't even have it's, to have, have have the skills of designing it because that is taken but care. That's of. where I'm going. In other words, will I be able to say? Uh, create a, a CAD 3D model for output of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and send it to this address. <laughs> and no, I want, I want a statue here next week. That <laughs> in marble. Of in marble. Blah, you blah, take blah. care of it because that is the next step. But uh, we're, the, yeah, we're just joking, but we are close to this. We're not, I'm not joking here. Um, so, so of course, photography uh, or or art in general, but our uh, our focus here is f on photography. Um, photography isn't just that. Photography is, of course, a documentary. Photography is scientific, but uh, photography is also just a utility for many things. Uh, we're talking stock photography. We're talking a header photo for an article. We're talking um, whatever uh, uh, stuff that you need for a sales brochure or something. Um, I think that part of photography, the stock part, is dead. That is that is completely dead when this thing gets in the hands yeah. of i mean just imagine yeah. you you you're i mean blogging okay that is so 20 uh, 2010 but still uh, <laughs> whatever whatever you do substack or or something like that um, you will still need pictures to illustrate what you're talking about you need a you need a a, a, a hero picture a header picture just imagine something like this being integrated in that so you write well, an article and then you and then you click a button that says generate picture based on the first two paragraphs. Sure. Or 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 Bam. you know, what will that mean for representations of actors who tightly control their um, their kind of usage in <clears throat> advertising, etc.? And you can go, oh, you know, make me a portrait that is similar but not exact to Matt Damon in oh. sunglasses on a beach. Create now, create a picture of a bus filled with 12 Jeremiah's, four Chris's and two Adrian's. There you go. This will this will be a simple task to do, yes. Absolutely. And so and and so I can see contracts of the future going. Well, you can't use my likeness, but you can't also request that my likeness be used in an AI to generate a likeness. So that's that's when we get to the point of what Elon Musk said about AI. He said that stuff needs regulation. Well, because I, I because of these kind of implications. Well, yeah, I, I, we can. I think we live in a, a society where. Almost everything is regulated because if it were not, we would be in a nihilistic, anarchic uh, survival of the fittest universe, which we teeter on daily. <laughs> which some um, people really <laughs> want to make happen. Yeah, that, that, That's right. And so regulations of finance to protect. Oh, yeah. Uh, regulations of copyright uh, to protect. Now, often, as we know, there are unintended consequences that protect only the powerful and not the actual creators. So there is 
there are cracks in all systems, but hopefully we try to patch those cracks and make things more, I guess, just or protected. Um, so people don't get exploited as much as they would without the regulation. I think that's it. And when regulations are generated by the forces that would only benefit by rules that favor them, that's called politics. Hmm. Yeah, so I don't think we'll have answers like to every last <laughs> no. question, but I think influence on copyright, influence on stock photography, influence on the whole field of art creation um, is, is probably that those there are plenty of implications here. So I guess um, we'll we'll link here, to. Hmm? Sorry, go ahead. Here, here's a thought: Will poets become the next art superstars? Possible, possible, possible. If being able to generate linguistic floralization of concept, to be able to generate images using language, unlike other people can use language, because in the examples that you've presented, the language is pretty basic, you know, a cat, a car. But when one kind of uses the language in a more poetic sense, a more abstract sense, and that generates something unique to the creator, like a coder using generative art, th there could be a, a whole other shift of what art means, what expression means, what uniqueness means. And so the image is just a representation of the language not in and of itself the thing. So that's food for thought. Well, we are going to leave you, well, we're going to leave this topic before we go to our picks with uh, pictures of statues slipping on the ice. <laughs> Look at these. That's just, just an example uh, of three of them. There's an entire thread there. So having that said, let's go to the picks of the week. And, uh, okay. I know I'm gonna let you start with yours first by Tatiana Lopez in between dreams the forest echoes the song of the burning anaconda what are we looking at here well I thought this could dial into um, sort of the the overview of, of a human representing through language dreams imagery um, you know and basic technique uh, an expression of their cultural heritage needs and 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 wants. Um, I think these are rather they're so personal and so specific that they do in so many ways tie in to what it is we've been talking about with machines. Th there is a sense of unreality of dreams created here, okay. um, a, and you could you know. What a what a, what a mix of of, of materials here cyanotype embroidery <laughs> this is, yeah. this is yeah, exactly. beautiful very, very, beautiful yeah beautiful unique and, and expressive and worth looking at wow not everything has to be kind of slick and polished now i um, wonder if you if you would explain that well to dali say i need a picture as a cyanotype of a person with a embroidered yeah. Leaves around it that might that might actually emerge. Oh my god, this is so scary. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> when uh, when can we get the API, Chris? We, we need this. We want oh, to I've play I've uh, I've uh, signed up for the early access. So <laughs> so let's, did I. <laughs> let's figure this out. Um, and I brought something that is related to photography and AI, uh, even though it is not quite uh, about art. It is about X-ray. Uh, because Europe just um, just uh, allowed the first X-ray analyzing AI or cleared the first X-ray analyzing AI um, in the world, I think. And Europe is the first place where they can do this. So um, what we're talking about is um, chest X-rays that radiologists spent a lot of time looking at and trying to identify if that little dot there is cancer or not and these kind of things so um, you are looking at very time consuming anal analysis of pictures by people and uh, what that AI can do is fully autonomously that is the 
kind of interesting part here. Analyze these pictures for anything that's out of the ordinary. And if the if there is nothing out of the ordinary, which is the majority of all pictures and which is where the radiologists spend their, most of their time at, then the AI can fully autonomously dismiss that case and say, no, everything's fine. If it finds something that it deems worthy uh, to, to look deeper into, it'll forward this to a radiologist to have a closer look and, and employ their experience. So... That is, I think, the reason it's it's for a first in Europe is because the CE um, approval is easier than the FDA approval or something. It's it's easier to get, I think. So anyway, that's your AI future, and I'm I'm all for that because it turns out that machines and AIs are better at these kind of things where it's about trying to find patterns and unusual things and so on. So. Um, I think the radiologists don't really like the idea of being replaced by a machine partially. Now, of course, here's my dystopian slant. How about um, how about uh, radiologists are from now on looking less at these kind of pictures, and then their skills fade over time? Oh, well, certainly. Yeah, it's probably yeah, I, you know, it's a side effect, <laughs> right? <laughs> I thought you weren't going to go dystopian. So. Oh, it was just a tiny little dystopia. Anyway, that was it, it for this episode. It's true. People don't learn math anymore. Same thing, right? Just well, again, uh, calculations and mathematics are two different things. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, um, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy to have a thing in my pocket that can do basic calculations just based on me asking it to do them. I mean, that's the other interesting thing. You don't even have to type much anymore. If you need a quick percentage yeah. of something, then, yeah, the machine will do it for you. Me we'll too. be We'll be back soon with more. Um, this was interesting. So uh, you can find us online at The Future of Photography, TFOP Now on Twitter. We'll be back soon. Until then, everyone, take care and have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.